Great news for everybody who doesn't want to spend two grand on a brand new full frame camera. APS-C is back. Sony started once again manufacturing the A6400, a small and fairly inexpensive body that we really liked for stills and video, including vlogging. But they also have a whole set of new APS-C lenses that they're announcing right now. This is the super wide angle 11 millimeter f1.8, really great for astrophotography or low light landscapes. We're not reviewing that right now, but subscribe to see our upcoming review of it. This is Sony's new 15 millimeter f1.4. It's like a 23 millimeter f2, which gives you really nice background blur for vlogging like this, or it's great for astrophotography. I'm going to compare it to the Sigma 60 millimeter f1.4, which has just been a staple of APS-C vlogging in an upcoming review. And finally, the two lenses that we're reviewing today are Sony's ultra wide zooms for APS-C. This is the 10 to 20 f4 power zoom. See that? You can pull in and out without any jerky motion. It feels great and is incredibly lightweight. And of course, I'm going to compare it against the existing 10 to 18 zoom. This is an optically stabilized lens. So I'm curious how that's going to impact, especially the handheld vlogging performance. In this video, I'm putting these two lenses through our full 10 point lens test checklist. But first I wanna plug our own store because buying some photography education can improve your photos and videos so much more than just buying new gear. But also for Father's Day, we have a deep sale going on right now. Check out our flash video training and our professional portrait training. Both of these will help you actually make money with the camera gear that you're spending money on. And if you have questions about what gear you should buy, check out my photography buying guide. That's right, a proper book that answers all of your camera questions and makes it super simple. Of course, the award-winning, best-selling, stunning digital photography, the best-selling photography book in the world for the past decade. Check out over 5,000 five-star reviews on Amazon. It has over 20 hours of video now. Our books on Photoshop, Lightroom, and Lightroom Classic will allow you to get your work done faster so you can get off the computer and back to shooting. All of those are available at northrop.photo. Let's get into the tests. I'm testing each of the lenses on a full-frame Sony a7R IV. Why would I be using a full frame camera to test APS-C lenses? Well, it's 60 megapixels. So even cropped, it's about 26 megapixels, but it also has no AA filter, which is better for testing sharpness. Let's take a look at the results. Here's both lenses at 10 millimeters. These two pictures should look identical at this scale, but we see a few differences. The new lens appears to be wider angle, even though it's still 10 millimeters. On the other hand, the new lens has significantly more distortion, as you see from the way this wood is curved. I don't know if this is because of different optical designs or the built-in lens profile that Lightroom applied to both lenses. I'm gonna fix the exposure and then check the details. Zooming in near the center of the image, we can see the new lens is significantly sharper. This is a big win for Sony users. At the corner of the frame, too, the new lens is significantly sharper. These words are much more readable and there's far more detail. Check out how smeary and distorted the old lens got near the edges. The new lens, nice and crisp. In the out of focus areas, the old lens got distorted and chaotic. The new lens shows nice, clear bokeh. At the long end of both, we can see how much that two millimeters of extra reach gets you. Zooming in again, the new lens is so much sharper. Looking at the bokeh at 20 millimeters, the new lens has soap bubble bokeh, but at least it's round and defined, whereas the old lens is completely chaotic, making seemingly random shapes. If you're cross shopping these two lenses and you care about image quality, definitely get the new 10 to 20 power zoom. Now we'll test vlogging while walking at 10 millimeters to see how well it holds focus on my face, to see how it handles the contrast of that kind of backlighting but also to see the stabilization because the OSS version of the lens, the old one, that's optical stabilization. That means the lens itself is stabilized and the camera does not need sensor stabilization because the thing is there's no Sony APS-C camera with a flip screen that has sensor stabilization. Thus you really need it in the lens. Let's try the other lens. This is the new lens that does not have stabilization again at 10 millimeters. And I'm curious to see how the shake is going to be different. It's bad, real bad. I would not use this lens handheld on a camera that doesn't have sensor stabilization. So I refilmed it on a camera with sensor stabilization in active mode. So it's actually cropped in a little bit and it was better, but I don't really like how Sony handles this. I feel like it makes it all smeary. So maybe if you're gonna use this lens handheld, you'd better put it on a gimbal. This does have one trick up its sleeve. I can zoom with a power zoom, which is nice and smooth. 
So that means I can do like a dolly zoom effect on myself. Watch as I change personalities like I'm in severance. Sony as a system does have a big advantage in that they have lenses like now two super wide angle APS-C lenses. The Canon R mount has two APS-C cameras, both of which have flip screens, but there is no super wide angle lens suitable for vlogging at all. The widest you can go is equivalent to about 29 millimeters full frame. Nikon has an APS-C system, but again, no APS-C mirrorless lenses. You could like adapt an old DSLR lens or put on a super expensive and big full frame super wide lens. Then there's Fuji that has flip screens and APS-C, but they're focusing, we determined, just not good enough to recommend it for vlogging. So right now, at the low end of the game, if you want a system you can invest in and be confident you're gonna get new gear in the future, which I'm gonna be recommending Sony APS-C cameras. This is Val, and she's going to help me test for flaring and chromatic aberration. You can see I have a powerful strobe put behind her head. This is going to simulate the sun or any kind of backlight for both portrait and landscape conditions. This is a situation that can really stress a lens because the light from a light like this will get into the lens and bounce all around. So ideally, Val's face when shooting into this light would not become washed out. But I'm putting the lenses on my Sony here and we're going to fire each of them with the same settings, with the same brightness of light, and see how they handle that contrast. But this also shows the chromatic aberration as it shines through her hair, and it will show distinctive flaring depending on the coatings that the lenses have. Let's take a look at the results. First, notice again that the new lens is about a third of a stop darker. While the f-stops might match, it seems like the t-stop does not. We'll start by correcting that. Zooming in, the contrast looks about the same and there's no obvious flaring. Take that back. Zooming back, I see some purple here from the new lens. So the old lens might actually be a little better in this respect. Let's check chromatic aberration. They both have some fringing, but the new lens definitely shows more magenta. At 18 millimeters, again, the new lens is still a little bit darker. However, zoomed in, the new lens is sharper with better contrast. But again, we see the purple caused by the light reflecting off the internal lens elements. And at 18 millimeters, the new lens is better at chromatic aberration. So the old lens wins at 10 millimeters, but the new lens wins at 18 millimeters. And now for astrophotography. Even at midnight, the conditions weren't perfect with hazy clouds and suburban light pollution, but let's look at the results. Near the center of the image, we can see the new lens is indeed a little bit crisper. You can see the starlight spreads a little bit and the blue spectrum on the older lens. Near the corners of the frame, it's even more dramatic. The older lens really smears these stars while the new lens keeps them nice and centered. For astrophotography, the new power zoom lens is definitely worth the upgrade. Of course, if you are into astrophotography, you might wanna consider the new Sony 15 millimeter F14 G. It's a prime lens, so no zoom, but it's three stops faster, meaning it gathers eight times more light. Look how much cleaner the image from the prime lens is than the image from the zoom lens. For astrophotography, prime lenses are definitely where it's at. If the 15 millimeter isn't wide enough for your astro shots, maybe you're doing Milky Way shots, consider the new 11 millimeter F1.8. While it's not as fast as the F1.4 lens, it is much wider and you can see it's a huge improvement from the zoom lens. And now I'm going to shoot directly into the sun to test the starburst effect for each of the lenses. You see, at high f-stops, the sun becomes a starburst with two points for every blade of the lens's aperture. Depending on the lens quality, we could see better or worse flaring too, so it's a good chance to double check the flaring results from the previous test. Let's look at the results. First we see at f22, every bit of sensor dust becomes very obvious. At 10 millimeters, the old lens looks a little mushy, while the new lens is nice and crisp. The same is true at 18 millimeters. If you might be shooting starbursts into the sun, get the new lens. For my next test, maximum magnification, I'm enlisting the help of my dad here. I'm going to take each lens and put it into manual focus. Focus at the minimum focusing distance, and then I'm going to get as close as I can to see how big I can reproduce this and how much detail I can capture for close-up macro subjects. Let's take a look at the results. Wow, look how much closer the new zoom lens got. This lens has some of the best macro capabilities I've seen in a non-macro lens. So which of these two lenses should you buy? It's actually not a super simple answer. If you're a video shooter, this new lens has power zoom, which lets you push in and out nice and smooth. That really improves your production values. 
but this one has optical stabilization. In case you're walking with a lens, it will help make it a little more smooth, but you can overcome that if you happen to have a body that has sensor stabilization or active steady shot inside, or if you want to use a gimbal. If you're shooting stills, the answer is clear. The new power zoom lens is significantly sharper. Be sure to subscribe to see our upcoming camera reviews, tons of tutorials and weekly news. Bye.